Welcome to Socially Responsible Investing Podcast. This is episode seven. I'm Bill Holiday with AIOfinancial.com. In this episode, I will be speaking with Bill Hargrove of Calvert Investments. They manage about 19 different mutual funds, a wide variety of socially responsible uh, funds. I asked Bill about his background in his Okay, I've been with Calvert now for 14 years. I'm actually the external wholesaler for the Southwest. I cover Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and Colorado. And I help uh, individual advisors uh, to basically understand what Calvert has to offer in the social responsible investment world. Okay. What is your title there? I'm the regional vice president. Okay. Okay, and uh, could you give us just a little background on Calvert? Yeah, Calvert, you know, Calvert started back in 1976 primarily as a tax-free bond. Um, that, that's kind of where they got started as a money market fund in Washington, D.C. Uh, they brought out in 1982 equity funds, and that's when they decided they were going to run the SRI approach on all of the equity funds. So we do have one bond fund that is also screened, but... So basically, in 1982 is when, you know, Calvert basically launched its first U.S. mutual funds with uh, ESG criteria, and that was also okay. when we first took a stand against the practice of apartheid in South Africa. Okay, was that the main issue that started? No, it just uh, happened to be going on at the time, and that's one of the okay. things they decided they they would divest out of South Africa, and then they were the first ones to go back into South Africa. Um, in 1994, once you know it was invested in free South Africa, so right. um, we also were the first uh, you know mutual fund shareholder to file a shareholder resolution tied to a social issue, and that was back in 1986. Um, and what was that issue? Uh, at that time, I'd have to go back and look at the exact yeah. issue, but. Um, you know, I can go over later about the shareholder resolution process and everything like that. So. Okay, great. Great. And so you're saying uh, Calvert has equity mutual funds. Did you say they just have one bond fund? Right now we have one screen bond fund. It's an intermediate oh, okay. fund. It's called our Calvert Social Bond Fund. And then we have about 19 different choices, you know, going from fund to fund to, you know, all share classes. Um, you can do a complete asset allocation on all of our um, social responsible funds. So we've got, you know, large cap, small cap. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, alternative energy. We've got global water, international, small cap, international, balanced funds, uh, fund to funds, whether it's conservative, aggressive, or moderate, that you could do investments in that way as well. I know Calvert was new or they have a value fund that was kind of new and there aren't many alternatives for SRI value funds. No, there's not. And then also our value fund has a, it's an acronym called SAGE, which stands for sustainability achieved through greater engagement. And so that one fund will have a slightly different screening process on it, whereas it won't have our full bound of our signature screen. So let's say there's 60 holdings in the portfolio Maybe yeah. 40 of them pass our signature screening process, but 20 of them may not pass, but we're going to invest with them with the idea that we're going to give them three to four things we want to see them work on in a given year, and then we're going to go dialogue with the management. We're going to go sit in on meetings, um, sit on the board meetings, and just try and get them to make these changes that we want. And then at the end of the year, your clients will get a report showing you know, what activity we've had with these companies, what they've agreed to do. And so it's more of an activism type play. So. Gotcha. So, so a lot, some of the companies that are held in there might not be considered SRI, but you're, you're going to try to make some changes there. Exactly. And, yeah. you know, one of them, you know, is that, you know, people will see in there is Walmart um, is one of the companies, which is one of our Sage companies. And, you know, we wanted to make sure and see if they would adopt the International Labor Absorption Organization Core Labor Standards. Um, We also looked at, you know, we wanted to make sure they adopted a policy on sustainable sourcing of wood, paper products, and 
you know, eliminating chloride and and phytates from products sold. So, and then taking mm. a look at their supplier chain, you know, uh, you know, some of their supply issues. So, gotcha. The you you have an emerging market fund. What is the? I mean, can you get involved with shareholder advocacy in emerging markets? Well, I mean, we're still going to be shareholders, so we can still be dialoguing with the companies and doing those sorts of things um, with it. And the Emerging Markets Fund is really brand new. It just came out, so um, we're still at the beginning stages of that. But is it is it uh, like foreign countries that trade on the U.S. exchange, or is it – I mean, is it – I'm not sure what the practice is for shareholder rights in other, you know, especially emerging uh, countries. Yeah, I mean, it's going to have a lot of the same core strategies of our signature strategy. There may be a few things in there that we're not able to get that are just harder to get because they are, you know, smaller emerging type countries. And, you know, a yeah. lot of those that stuff internationally, they don't have a lot of the same reporting standards that we have here. So we have to get right. a little bit more deeper in, insight on what we're getting our information from. Well, that's a nice offer to see. Again, we don't see many emerging market SRI funds or the value, so those are nice to have mm -hmm. just so they, that you can get a balanced portfolio. What, could you go over some of your your signature screening or your kind of the approach you take with sure. mutual funds? Yeah, I mean – you know, one of the things we look at is, you know, you do have avoidance screens, and then you also have, you know, ones that are through investment criteria. And you, so you have your exclusions on the signature strategy is going to be no tobacco, no weapons, no firearms, alcohol, gambling, and nuclear. So that's on the signature strategy. Okay. And I'll go over the other two. It's not that much different on the other two when I go through it, but I'll, let me finish up with the rest of the investment criteria we look at. Our core criteria we look at are corporate governance and ethics, which has been at the top of mind of investors in the last five to ten years. I'm going back all the way to Enron with some of their reporting standards. Um, okay. You know, one of the big things we look at in, this, in the governance is we're looking at making sure that, you know, corporate uh, – Pay management pay is, you know, the success of pay is what we're looking for there. We're looking at diversity of boards. Um, we're also looking at the reporting standards, their accounting principles, their ethics, um, those sorts of things. Accounting standards and ethics in what, uh, in what way? If there's legal actions or equal employment opportunities or... Well, you know, we're, it's basically, you know, poor government structures such as like um, illegal or questionable activities such as security fraud or insider loans. Okay. Or have weak internal audit controls or poor compliance records with respect to bribery or corruption. Okay. And those are the governance issues you're looking at when you're screening. Mm -hmm. uh, it, does that also tie in with the shareholder advocacy or – well, I mean, that's some of the stuff that we would actually, in our advocacy, we would go in there and say, okay, you're doing very well in these areas. Um, maybe, you know, what, and, and, you know, a perfect example would be like Enron. Um, you know, Enron, you know, had excessive CEO pay. They had um, the thing that really kicked them out for us was the excessive CEO pay, and then also 100% of the 401k was in one stock, in their stock. You know, you could talk to them and ask them to change that. They wouldn't change it. And so, you know, you know, it depends on how the dialogue with the management goes as well. But, you know, we will make efforts sure. to see what we can do there. Gotcha. Okay. And then the environment, you know, we favor companies that, you know, find opportunities to mitigate their environmental footprint, um, you know, with records to their peers and, and stakeholders. So we're looking at, you know, they have good pollution controls in place, Um you know, we're looking at their operation, not only their operations, but also their, their products themselves, how they affect the environment. Gotcha. Uh, so pollution for the manufacturing and the products, do you, uh, you know, look at some of the energy or some of the, I guess, products that are out there, I mean, vehicles or uh, oil, and do you just avoid completely uh, some of the less favorable, uh, you know, energy sources, or do you 
pick the best of the worst or try to make changes? Well, you know, what it is is that, you know, it, it's still, we're in the investment business still, so I mean, you still have to, I mean, there are going to be headwinds in the energy sector for us. There always will be because we're not going to have a real heavy exposure in energy, but we will have the best in class um, that we will get okay. from like oil companies or other things. So, and we will be in dialogue with them and working with them and uh, doing those things. So, but we have okay. to have that exposure, uh, you know, in order to be an investment for the benchmark basically. So. Gotcha. Okay. And that's the environment and governance any other screening that you apply? Absolutely. Um, we do workplace issue screens. Um, where okay. This is a, basically a screening process where we're looking at, you know, are they promoting women and minorities in the workplace? Um, do they have good health benefits in place for their employees? Do they have good retirement benefits in place? And this is an area in advocacy we can really help out with is that, you know, maybe they're not real strong on the, retirement side, we can go in there and say, maybe if you added two or three options for an SRI here, then, you know, your employees would have a better options to to choose from for their retirement plan and, you know, other things. So, and then making sure the diversity of the, the, the company itself. Sure. And how responsive do you find some of these companies are to those kinds of requests? Well, you'd be surprised. I mean, in the, the shareholder... Uh, we filed shareholder resolutions. I think we filed 40 of them in 2011. And, you know, just to environment, but I mean, across the board, we filed 40 resolutions or co-filed them, and, you know, 29 of them were successfully withdrawn just with us talking to them. Oh, wow, great. So they are pretty responsive, and then if it, they don't withdraw them from just talking, then, you know, it will be sent to a vote. And if you get a 15 to 25% vote from the the meeting, then usually they'll sit back down with you and talk some more. Yeah, I'm always amazed by that. All you need is a, a small percentage of the shareholder votes, and you can make a pretty good impact. And is that mostly because these indexes aren't voting, or, or just a lot of the shareholders aren't? That's a lot of it. Is that you know you have some of these larger holdings that start putting in their votes, and you know they figure if at 25 percent, they've got to sit down and listen. So. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Any other screenings that, and these are throughout all your funds, these are pretty basic areas that you're looking at throughout. Yeah, I mean, you've got the product okay. safety and impact. Um, you know, that's where a lot of the tobacco, alcohol, and stuff comes into play. Um, international right. operations. Um, if a company goes overseas, we want to pay in fair wage in those countries. Um, we want to also. You know, a lot of the times this is where the child labor issues will come into play. Um, you know, we want to adopt specific human rights standards for their operations. And, you know, we're actively addressing human rights abuses and promoting social and economic justice. So, um, okay. so that's the international screen. And then we also have an indigenous people's rights where, you know, concerned about the survival and security of the indigenous peoples around the world. Uh, we seek to avoid investing in companies that have a pattern uh, violating these rights for people, um, whether it be, you know, if they manufacture or, or products or offensive labels or logos. Gotcha. And um, do you yourselves at Calvert do the research or go out in the field to look at these? Uh, I mean, it seems like a lot of extra work because you're evaluating performance or soundness of companies plus a lot of these other issues, or is there a third party that's doing a lot of this? No, you know, we've got, actually, that's one of the things that we pride ourselves on Calvert is that, you know, and when I mentioned we started out as a bond shop, we have a lot of our bond managers in-house. But one of the things we did is at the time when we brought out equities, is we decided the most important piece that we needed to control was the research part of it, or the SRI. So we have all of our research team is in-house. So there's nine, over 19 individuals in the department, 10 analysts, and all they do is they research over 4,500 companies a year. And whether that means they're emailing, whether it means they're visiting the company or being in contact with them by telephone, going to the board meeting, uh, filing the right. resolutions, whatever it may be, we're doing all of that. And one, one of the intriguing things about this, though, is that by having that control, when I started 14 years ago, 
there was hardly maybe you can count on your hands how many companies were coming to us wanting to know if they passed our screens. But whether mm. whether it's you know because of all the corporate governance stuff that's gone on in the past ten years, we have over you know two hundred fifty three hundred a year any given year coming to us wanting to know what do they need to do to be a part of our social index. And you know, gotcha. and so it's uh, one of those things where they want to be a part of it, and you know, a, a real winner, and that was Nike for several years. I mean, they came to us over a ten-year period, and we kept giving them things they needed to change, things they needed to do. And they finally sent an independent contractor over, and they became more transparent, and they fixed some of their supply line issues, and, and you know, they, they they did meet the minimum criteria in the past couple of years. So, you know, it just goes to show that you know. From going to where we had to go out to a lot of these companies, now all these companies are coming to us. Yeah, that's great to set a standard uh, that people want to achieve, give them the goals, and and kind of force the direction of a lot of companies in that mm-hmm. in that way would be. I mean, that's a wonderful uh, achievement. Yeah. Exactly. Um. And then I think I'm just going through here. Let me just finish up the screening for you. Is that, you know, yeah, yeah. Go have, ahead. We have the community relations. Um, we want to make sure that, you, that the companies are going back into the communities, um, whether they're doing a commitment to the communities and they operate or targeting uh, minority or low-income populations, building strong working relationships within those communities. And so we're always looking at that part of it, too. Gotcha. In this, uh, I mean, for all your mutual funds, it seems like this is the basket of screening. There's no... Um, I guess any way to customize that? I mean, if we had a client that doesn't necessarily care about some of these issues or is more concerned about some than another, mm-hmm. um, do, do you do any just managing equity or individual stock? Well, uh, I don't you know. know separate, like a, separate managed accounts or something that they, they, we are just starting to dabble in. Um, you know, we're not completely there yet. But, you know, it's one of the things where we just feel that we can give the client a complete social audit of the company. And I know there's some things they probably don't care about. But the other thing you've got to remember by having these screens, and a lot of people don't realize, is what do these screens really do also is they eliminate lawsuits. So if you're, you're protecting yourself from potential blowups, I mean, even if it's a screen you don't like, it's something that's good. It's another financial, it's another set of eyes on a, a company other than just the financial one. So, yeah, I agree. I know I definitely agree with the governance. A lot of these different issues, I could just see if someone said, ah, "I don't care if I invest in alcohol or not." Mm-hmm. Um, I guess it's pretty minor in the big scope, and I guess you have to start somewhere and see so if make some uh, criteria and and. I guess it would be hard to customize every single uh, screen for each person's individual desires. Well, when you get down to that point when, you know, maybe they only have one or two things they're really concerned about, then you're looking at just, you know, outside. Because a lot of the mutual funds out there don't have just single screening. So, I mean, you're going to have to take what you can get depending on what they're screening for. And each mutual fund company is different. And what they do, some of them only screen for tobacco and alcohol, you know. So right. You know, then then you've got environmental problems if that's an issue. So. And your complete screening here with the governance, the environmental workplace, the product, uh, impact and safety, indigenous rights, all these issues, community relations even, is that called something? I mean, is that an industry standard, this complete screen? Um, it's, I mean, it's, it's called our Calvert Signature Screen Strategy, basically. Um, okay. But, I mean, if what you're trying to find, I mean, I get this question, too, is that where do we come up with all the screens, um, basically, is that, you know, we, 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 we sit on social boards, and, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, recently what you're seeing down in, uh, you know, um, well, where is it? I'm just trying to think here. Hold on one second. Uh, you know, Sudan. The issues that are going on down there, you know, when the South Africa thing happened, I mean, when these things pop up, all the boards talk, and then they say, well, why don't we do some divestment out of these areas to try and help out? So, I mean, the Indigenous Peoples' Rights one was one that was just brought out in the last five years. So, you know, and and it's just what's of interest at the time in your social timeline, basically. 
Gotcha. So these can change with time, I'm sure. There'll be other issues that come up. and Right. And it's not just us saying this is the issues we're doing. I mean, it's we, we're trying to gather the pulse of the community. Gotcha. Now, uh, now that you've got the signature strategy, I need to just kind of go through just, and it's not going to take too long, but we do have a couple of our funds, which we call our solution funds, which is your global water and your global alternative energy. Okay. Now, the thing that's um, a little bit different with them is that, you know, we have no nuclear in our signature approach. There may be some nuclear in the solution strategies only because we're not investing in the nu- in them for nuclear. We're investing in them, and they may have nuclear as one of their byproducts. So let's say uh, Florida Power and Light. They're one of the largest wind suppliers in the country, and we're investing in them in the wind. Uh, but they have right. some attachments to nuclear. So your clients need to be aware of that, that it's more of a thematic approach. And uh, there may be some nuclear in there. So that's one thing you should address. Sure. And then the other one is the SAGE strategy that we talked about where, you know, maybe a third of them won't pass their signature screens with the idea that we're going to get them to pass over time. Yeah. No, and that, yeah, that sounds very reasonable too, to get involved, to make some changes. And just remember, SAGE is only on that large cap value fund, the SAGE drive. Oh, okay. Great. But one thing um, to remember is you can get all of our resolutions for any given year. We can have our internal send them out to you guys and let you see the, you know, what, how many resolutions we did, how many of them were drawn. We can show you everything with the SAGE, you know, where they are. Um, on, you know, company standards and stuff. Okay. And wh- why don't we d- jump to that with shareholder advocacy? What are the biggest resolutions that you've done the last couple of years? Well, I think uh, what I have one here is um, one of them is a climate change one, a uh, shareholder resolution for um, actually Hertz. It was done back in 2009. And we just wanted to get some better practices by the rental car company and, you know, basically um, agreeing to publish sustainability reports that included current and historical data on fuel economy of its fleet and provide future goals for reduction of this. Mm. And they actually did decide that they were going to do that. They We withdrew it, and they agreed to some of our terms. And as of August 31st of that year, you know, within six months, they were owned in a social index fund. Oh, great. Yeah, that's a good example. And the, and then I I did hear you saying uh talking about pay differences or excessive uh executive compensation is that something that's addressed through uh the shareholder advocacy or more just discussions with uh the companies that you hold? You know, a lot of it's in the discussions, but I mean if it gets to the point where we need to follow a shareholder act report and get a vote board, vote from the board, then we'll do that. Okay. Um, you know, I think uh, in the one of my favorite ones, I think, in the last would have had to be with Dell computers, but not just Dell in particular, but with uh, all the big computer companies out there because of the recycling of the computers, you know, and China yeah. and everything else just being, you know, it's such an issue. We Everybody has computers in the base, but they don't know what to do with them or how to recycle them. And so one of the things is we had a, a big floor come and show what the recyclability reports were. And, you know, they all had a little bit of this and that, but some of them were being shipped to China. Some of them weren't doing as much as they should be doing. And, you know, Dell kind of stepped forward and, and said, you know, well, what we'll do is we'll go into the communities once a month. It'll be on our website. We'll recycle the computers. It doesn't have to be a Dell for a nominal fee. They go ahead and do that. Well, one of the things that Dell realized, which was a, a win for it, is that what kind of computers do you think those people bought? And that, you know, it's more of a marketing play for them. So it's kind of a reward. Sure. And so it was just neat to see him step up and do that. And yeah, and really make a play that way. I've heard I've heard about that before. The recycled computers that that is a, a good uh, example of making some change. Any other examples that you want to share? I, I, think, I mean, the Dell and the Hertz are great ones. Well, you know, I think uh, Home Depot about three or four years ago was a good one also. I mean, it's not real long, but it's something that's neat to tell some people. is, You know, we were investing in. They're a great financial company. Um, 
and that's this is one of the things too is that you know a red flag will pop up every now and then and we just don't divest out of them as soon as a red flag pops up we'll basically go talk to the company and one of the things that came up with Home Depot was they were getting a large amount of their supply of lumber from an old growth forest and mm. a company that was getting it from an old growth forest basically and so right. we filed a shareholder resolution sat down with them and they agreed to use a different supplier so the resolution was withdrawn but it's just things like that that you know even though we're investing in it's a great time things will pop up and we just sure. don't get out of people immediately we want to make sure that the research is all done and maybe there can be some change if there can't then we would have had to divest out of them right right no, that's good. Yeah, try to adjust what they're doing is, is probably the best approach. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess just about SRA in general, hey, actually, what is, what's your background before this? Were you in financial field? Yeah, I actually it was 14 years with Calvert in the same position I'm in. Um, prior to that, I was with the Invesco Funds Group out of oh, Denver, yeah. Colorado for six years. So I kind of worked my way up on the services side, going into sales you know, face-to-face sales, and then also internal desk and outside sales. So. And what got you into the SRI? Was there any reason? Well, you know, it was one of the that... things that I was young know, at the time. I mean, I was looking for a wholesaler position. Uh, a lot of it was that I just wanted to be in Colorado. My family's all here. And at the time, sure. I still wanted me to move to Portland. And actually, gotcha. one of my uh, colleagues, Craig Floyd, um, was basically – the national sales manager over at Calvert. And it just, you know, once I got to more research and talking to him about the company and, you know, actually going back and interviewing with Barbara and seeing that, you know, there's more to it. If you can invest with your values and and, and make the money for your retirement, why not do it? It's so powerful. And sure. it's one of the things that attracted me to it. It's, it's, I didn't want to sell performance. I just wanted to, I want to make sure I'm selling something that's making a difference. That's great. And uh, I, I guess how in those last 14 years have you seen SRI changing? Or, uh, any ideas about the direction? or? Um, I would say performance overall has been just phenomenal over the last 10 to 15 years. So, I mean, because, yeah. you know, when I first came on board, a lot of the SRI firms and, you know, us too, we're 1% or 2% behind the benchmark. And, you know, I think – if you look at it from, you know, what's been going on in the industry, sometimes when you have outside managers, you can get some style drift, you get some heavy cash positions. And I think that was a lot of it. it wasn't the screening that was holding it back. It was actually just getting in place the management to look over our outside management. And we've done a really nice job with that. And uh, so I'd say the performance, just being able to invest with your values, and, you know, you don't have to give up performance now to invest that way. And what is your example of that? Because that is a complaint about SRI, that the performance lags. Um, I guess, what is your evidence saying that it doesn't? Well, I mean, there are more choices. I mean, if you look at one of my evidence that I always bring up in meetings is is that if you take the Russell 1000 maybe 10 years ago and ran our screening process against it, you'd be in the 48 to maybe – 45 to 48 percent range. Now, if you run those same screens um, in some of the newer screens we've run, you're at you're at almost a 68 to 70 percent pass rate. So companies themselves are doing better. We're getting more options to invest, but also uh, that's, yeah, you know. So I mean, it's one of those. There's more things. options because companies are becoming more responsible. Mm-hmm. Huh. But I don't think that's just it. I don't think – I just think, you know, if you can eliminate a lot of the, the problems in companies through social screens as well, you know, that adds to your bottom line. So, you know, you are going to have your headwinds. There's no doubt about it. When oil's at 150 a barrel, you know, we're not going to be right at the benchmark probably that year. But, you know – Right, it's going to hurt you not being heavily invested in it. Right, and then if, when it's down to 40 – that's when we make our hay, basically. So, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, we protect. I've always said this and since I've been there, that social responsible investing does protect you more on the downside risk. And mm. that's what you just got to look at because you have that extra layer of management. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a good good argument or a good way to look at it, that you are looking at some of these other issues that could bite you if you're not taking those into account. Mm-hmm. I mean, just uh, just looking at it fiscally, not that it's the responsible thing. Exactly. Great. And then in these funds, I know they're held at Schwab. People could invest directly with Calvert. Are they all available at you know many other brokerage houses? Yeah, we've got several of them. I mean, all the major brokerage houses, um, we've got pretty much our whole lineup available. Um, So, you know, accessibility is not a problem there, I wouldn't say. I think, you know, what you're going to see a little bit more is maybe on the retirement side and 401ks, people's 401ks and stuff. That's where it's got to be driven. You know, we need more social options in the 401k world. Right. You know, it's going to be a liability issue down the line if they don't start offering more of them and at least given the individual who wants to invest that way an option to so right and people should just request that from their employer to have some some options absolutely just uh, say give me some that's options right. yeah no that's that's great um and your what is the connection between calvert investments and calvert foundation is it two separate entities well, the Calvert Foundation is separate from uh, Calvert Investments, but uh, we do use the Calvert Foundation notes in a lot of our funds. So one to three percent okay. of every investment, you know, goes back out into the communities through micro enterprise loans, um, you know, and stuff like that. So, and those are loans that were always paid back on time. So we use them for that type of product. So, great. Oh, that's that's nice that there's some cross connection there. Mm-hmm. Well, that's wonderful. And anything else you want to add? No, I just you know, I just think people just need to be more open to it and just you know know that you know there is this availability to invest with your values. And if you look back ten years ago to where all of us are more with our values, I mean, we'll find you know three to four things we're doing now that we never used to do. And you know, if we can support it by doing our own investments that way, it's something we need to think about doing. Yeah. No, that's that's great. Well, thank you very much for your time. This was a, a good slice into a good look into Calvert Investments. All right, great. Well, thank you so much, and uh, I'd love to do it again. Just let me know. Okay, thanks a lot. To summarize, Calvert Investments delivers 19 different mutual funds that have three different SRI approaches. There's the Calvert Signature, The Calvert Signature, which has the environmental screens and uh, shareholder advocacy with regarding environmental, workplace, core governance, which is management pay, diversity of the board, uh, ethics, product, impact and safety, uh, indigenous rights and community relations. The Calvert Solutions I believe there are just two, uh, three different funds, the Calvert Global Water Fund, the Alternative Energy, and the Emerging Market Equity Fund fall into the Calvert Solutions. And then there's the Calvert Sage Portfolios, which is Calvert Equity Income and the Calvert Large Value. And the Sage is actually investing in some that don't meet the other screens, but trying to make an impact, uh, bringing up issues to make the companies more responsible or addressing some of these ESG issues. Please know that we are not recommending these investments for everyone. They're not appropriate for everyone. Please read the prospectuses, discuss them with your financial advisor. This wraps up episode seven. Next podcast, we will be talking to, let me pull that up, uh, Shared Interest, uh, uh, Shared Interest Microcredit Organization uh, that work in South Africa. Uh, Again, I'm Bill Holiday. Thank you for listening to the Socially Responsible Investing Podcast. You can find more information about us at AIOfinancial.com. Please let me know what you think. I welcome suggestions, comments, questions. You can email me, bill at aiofinancial.com or call 520-325-0769. Thanks a lot.